Looking for a little excitement? Cougar. Lincoln Mercury unleashes a striking new cat. New Cougar XR7. Lincoln Mercury's newest symbol of driving excitement. Cougar. Lean and trim. With 64% better estimated MPG than 1975. And a new automatic overdrive transmission is available. Cougar. More. So very luxurious with plush new fabrics. So innovative with new electronic cat options. With a finely tuned suspension for cat-like handling. For the 1980s, Lincoln Mercury unleashes the striking new Cougar XR7. Cougar. More. This is your year for the cat. Next Saturday and Sunday at 3.30 Eastern, it's the exciting Mixed Team Golf Championship with top female and male pros competing. Seventy-eight degrees here in Los Angeles. Beautiful day yesterday and today. Jimmy Edwards waiting for the kickoff from Frank Corral. He takes it on the goal line. For the 10, 15. And falls forward over the 20. And probably spot him on his 21-yard line. Greg Westbrooks made the initial hit on him. That's the story of the Ram drive. A short one. All set up by Turner accidentally touching the punt and leading to the Ram recovery. Well, the kicking game has been important this afternoon. It always is, and uh, a lot of people don't really fully realize that four to six games are going to be won by the kicking game every year. Tommy Kramer already has two touchdown passes. There was a good move by Ricky Young. He escaped right, a man right at the line of scrimmage and brought the ball back just short of his 25. He ran into Jim Youngblood and Jack Reynolds. No relation, Jack Youngblood's the left end and right in back of him, that left linebacker is Jim Youngblood. You know, the young quarterback, Tommy Kramer, is really doing a good job of changing the plays at the line of scrimmage. Also, he, if there's an overload one way or the other, he'll take advantage of it by going to the weak side, and that's exactly what he did in the, on the last play. Second down, six. Rocking ball under 25. Play action. Whips it out. There he is. Ted Brown. 45. Down to the rim. 40-yard line. A great play action pass by Tommy Kramer. Boy, has he got a great touch. You know, I've only seen him on one other occasion. That was against the Jets about a month ago. But, boy, he's very, very impressive. Got a great touch, a good arm, good command, good presence, a lot of poise and confidence. Boy, he laid it in there perfectly. He feathered it there. Oh, it he just down. like a feather. There's the final. The Bears dumped Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay, on their way to the division title now, are being sorely contested by the Bears. First down Viking on the Ram 40. Kramer shoots it. He has a completion. Dripping away. Ahmad Rashad is down to the Ram 18-yard line with Nolan Campbell takes it. Rashad has the most catches in the last four years in the National Football League. He now has 235, and that's his 65th catch this year. He saw the hole, the hole in the zone defense that time. It was very soft. Kramer got the ball right where it had to be, right in the hole. They sent a man in motion to spread the zone. He anchored right in the middle between the linebacker, Brzezinski, and also Reynolds, who was wide open. Kramer's handoff. John breaks over the 10 and to the 9. Kramer has attempted 15 passes, completed eight for 138 yards. Brownwell made the stop on Ricky Young. On the nine-yard line of the Rams. It'll be second down and a short yard. Bud Grant, Jerry Burns, they're doing a great job of sending in plays and keeping the Rams off balance, doing an excellent job. Old frozen face they call him, but a man of rare delight when you're around him. Especially out in a fishing stream, hunting in the outdoors, which he loves. Slant pass, 
Still on the throwing to Rashad. Let him a bit too much. Well, that brings up a third and a yard to go. Well, that was a bump and run situation, man for man, all the way. And that time, he did not lay the ball up on top like he should have. He should have thrown it up on top and to the outside. Had he done that, Rob Perry, number 49, would not have had an opportunity at all to make a play on the thrown ball. This game is tied 14 to 14. 736 to play in the first half. Bob Tucker, Steve Boyd, double tight end offense. Brown and Ricky Young are the running back. They're going to run left. Something left. They try to go left. And they, I don't believe they made it, Hank. Depends on how they untangle that pileup. It was Ted Brown who carried. And it is fourth down. Reynolds and Cromwell stacked them up. What do you do here now? You're in a tie game. Do you go for a field goal or you try and pick up this first down? Well, here again, the basic rule of thumb, we always felt if it was a yard or more, we'd kick the field goal. If it was less than a yard, we would go ahead and go for the first down. It looks like this might be less than a yard. They're going to talk it over. Pardon? Take a timeout to talk it over. Yes. Kramer goes over, talks to Bud Grant. 7.20 to go in the half. The Vikings have a timeout. Well, they'll have two left. Yards for a touchdown. To put the Vikings ahead, the Rams recovered an accidentally touched punt by the Vikings. Cullen Bryant plunged over with 10.42 to go in the half. That's the way it stands, 14 all. And that's Rick Danmeyer, who has missed four of his last five field goals. On the year, he's kicked 11 out of 17. Uh, he uh, has not done well lately. Well, they look like they're going to go ahead and try for the first down. They have less than a yard to go, and evidently they have the same rule of thumb. Fourth down and a short yard to go. Vikings ball on the Rams, nine and a half. Looks like something right. He throws. Intercepted by the Rams. Dwayne Osteen has the ball, bringing it out. Osteen picked it off. Right at the goal line. It was intended for Tucker. Uh, he faked up the middle and rolled out. And a flag is down. Boy, what a fantastic play by Dwayne Osteen, number 33, on the play action pass. They may tack something more on this play in favor of the Rams. That was a 40-yard return of the interception. Grabbing and pulling the face mask, number nine, that's a first down. Tommy Kramer, the quarterback, committed that foul. Not just grabbing a mask, but twisting the head. And they tacked 15 yards. And how the complexion has changed. Rams have the ball on the Vikings, 45, first down in a tie game, 14 to 14. Baragama will throw, shoots it out. Oh, it's nearly intercepted out there by uh, Fred McNeil, the right linebacker, covering the tight end, Terry Nelson. Second down, 10, Rams ball, Viking 45, 7.04 to play in the first half. Ferragamo, well, here we are with the Giants, 7-7 Dallas in the second quarter. Ferragamo seemed to be very deliberate and unsure of where he was supposed to throw the ball that time. Threw it a little late and almost had it picked off. Ron Smith in, Billy Waddy goes to the bench as a Ram wide receiver. This is the Rams' final season before moving to Anaheim. They have been playing at the Coliseum since 1946. Draw play, Tyler, half yard. Uh oh, Atlanta moves ahead of San Diego, Hank, 14 to 10, second period. Big difference when you have your quarterback back in the game. Steve Bartkowski did not play last week. He's playing this week just through a touchdown pass to Will William Andrews. And let's repeat for late tuners in that Denver, on a late field goal, upended Buffalo by three points in Buffalo. Buffalo had won three in a row. 
you have to give Denver a lot of credit. Boy, they've come from behind many times this year and, and somehow found a way to win. Third and ten. Denver's one game behind San Diego. Charging there is number 70, Jim Marshall and James White. They might have been fooled on the cadence by the quarterback, Vince Ferragamo. They might have called 77 on the offense. That's a false start on the Rams. Doug France, I think, was the left tackle who moved on the play prematurely. Third and 15. That's France from uh, Ohio State in his fifth year. Look at that. Kansas City, 37. Seattle, 21 in the fourth. Score here, 14 to 14. 185. 185. Breaking out is Ferragamo. Goes out of bounds. He's out on his 48, and Tim Baylor, a tall six foot five secondary back, took him out of bounds. Well, one thing about Ferragamo, I've only seen him a couple of times, but he surely doesn't have very much quickness. <laughs> and he doesn't have very good speed, which is very obvious in that last attempt to try to get to the outside after running out of the pocket. Punt formation. Kevin uh, Miller is the safety man. Ken Clark, the punter. Fourth down. 12 to go for the Rams. 19 to 16 was that final between Denver and Buffalo. Incidentally, after that ball touches the ground, anything goes in that kicker. They can cream him. They don't have to. They could have gone in and creamed him after that snap touched the ground. 14 all, second period, a timeout. People always say you talk funny, but when you talk about natural light beer, you make sense. To all my fans and fannies, I thank you. Natural light does have a taste on its own, because there's nothing artificial in this beer. Just the finest natural ingredients, including lots of barley malt, for a fuller taste and a less filling beer. <laughs> Look at it. Taste natural light. The difference is what we put in and don't put in. This is no laboratory light beer. Mm -hmm. This is natural light. Some guys never learn. They're still taking it on the chin. Gotcha. Norelco offers the Norelco Rotary Razor. Not one or two blades, but 36 blades inside three adjustable floating heads and a unique shaving angle for a very close shave without a nick or cut. So say hello to the Norelco Rotary Razor and say goodbye to Gotcha. Vikings as they take over on the 20-yard line the last time they had the ball. Tommy Kramer moved them 70 yards and then threw an interception at the goal line. First down, Minnesota. We're breaking out Ricky Young to the 27-yard line, hit there by Dwayne Osteen, who's been a standout in that secondary for the Rams today. That time, uh, Young ran to his left, started to his left, and broke it over to the right side. But that's a nice thing about the I formation, because you hit the line of scrimmage with your shoulder square, and you can hit any area that pops open. He saw the seam to his right and took advantage of it, made a nice gain on the play. It makes it second and three. Vikings haven't finished under 500 since Bud Grant's first year. We'll tell you more about that in a minute. Second down, three. Vikings from their 27. There's a first down and more. That's Ricky Young. Young has run hard today. And Cromwell had to take him in the secondary. Bud Grant's first year, the Vikings won three, lost eight, tied three. Right now, there are six wins, seven losses. So since 1967, they've always finished over 500. You know, Bud has had a great, a great many year, good years at Minnesota, but I don't think he's done a ever done a finer coaching job than he's done right this year because he's done a super job with his young team. First down Vikings on their 37 yard line. Game is tied 14 to 14. Kramer stepping up, throwing a short one and Ted Brown can't hold on to it. And the ball wasn't throwing hard to him either. He's disgusted with himself, Hank. Yes, he is. And Kramer 
Kramer shows a lot of animation. You know, he throws the ball and jumps up and down and uh, encourages his people. He's got a lot of pep. I like the way he looks and likes to uh, like very much the way he plays. And, and uh, he's got a terrific arm and a great touch. Second down, ten. Coming in is Brant McClanahan, number 33. Going out is Ricky Young. Four minutes, 38 seconds remain in the first half. A tie game, 14 to 14. The Vikings have 11 first downs to three for the Rams. A slant play by McClanahan to the 39-yard line of the Vikings. Give him two yards. Make it third and eight. Youngblood tackled him. You know, as much as they've thrown the ball so far in this game, I'm surprised they haven't gotten the ball to Bob Tucker, their fine tight end, who is a great actor, runs a lot of delayed patterns, will fall on the ground, pop back up, read a linebacker, and get himself wide open. They haven't done that yet so far. No, he, hasn't look a, he hasn't caught a pass yet, huh? I don't think he caught one in the pregame warm-up, either. Kramer's eight, eight out of 18. There's the sideline. It's complete. 49-yard line of the Rams to Sammy White, and they have a first down. A comebacker by White to beat Nolan Cromwell. First down. The Rams 48. Well, I think that's a great illustration what we what we're seeing here. He's moving the pocket enough too, Kurt, where you don't where the defense doesn't know specifically where he's going to uh, throw the ball from, and it. Uh, Puts a lot of pressure on the defense and uh, gives him better vision on the outside, especially when he has a one-on-one -on -one situation like he just had. There's your man Tucker just came in. 320 to play in the first half. Game tied, 14 to 14. 186. Rainbow, Rainbow. Flanahan out of motion. A roll out. Kramer will run it. 45, 40. Goes down. First down. 35 yard line. But he nimble. And uh, that was Fred Grier chasing him. He had a hit here uh, a year ago by Jack Youngblood. That here again, he a while. rolls out to his right. And watch this. He goes up the seam. He's very decisive. And he's very decisive about sliding. And not getting hit on the play. Fred Grier, first down. Ricky Young re-enters the backfield. Something right. There it goes over the head of Tucker. Kramer heard you up there. Had a little uh, short wave receiver in his ear. So Scram says we gotta go to Tucker. But he overthrew him that time. Yes, he did. Jack Reynolds, they, they had what they wanted, Hank. They got the tight end on the middle linebacker. Second down ten. The Vikings have far outgained the Rams today in offense. Vikings ball on the Rams 35. They have a very good passing concept. They throw a lot of high percentage passes, low risk stuff, and then when they get close enough, they're going to let one loose. But they move the ball very, very well. Although uh, Kramer goes more to his wide receiver to come to him. There's a blitz. Ben Brown has it, makes the move. 30 and is dragged out of bounds on the 28 of the Rams by Eddie Brown. Brown on Brown. That time they blitzed inside. The young quarterback, Tommy Craver, read it. He had a safety valve on the outside. Ted Brown got it out there quickly and got off the hook as far as the blitz is concerned. Third down three. Vikings ball on the Ram 28. Time moving along. It's 2.14 to go in the first period as the clock just stopped. Jack Reynolds has replaced Eddie Brown. They leave Reynolds in. They usually take him out in a situation, but they suspect a Viking run. If he throws the ball, he might get it to the back this time or to the tight end. No, the tight end's blocking. That was nearly good by Wazenti, the linebacker, 59, on a wide open field. It was intended for Ricky Young. All Mr. Unless somebody caught him from behind, which might have been likely, but he had a wide open field for a touchdown. You know, and Brzezinski has been vulnerable, especially against the pass and play action pass. But the last few times I've seen him play, he's really done a great job and he's showing terrific improvement. Last uh, week, he made a fine oh, interception oh, and ran it back well. 
46 yard attempt by Rick Danmeyer of Sioux Falls. With 2.10 to play in a half. The kick is going to be low. It's no good. And the Rams will take the ball out on their 28 yard line. So we have a timeout in the Coliseum in Los Angeles. A tie game, 14 all. Winners go with winners. Winners rent from Hertz because number one offers services most others don't. Like Hertz Express Car Return. You just drop the keys to your Mustang, LTD, or other fine car and go. Your statement is mailed the same day. No wonder the presidents of over 80% of America's top 500 companies carry Hertz cards. Hi, OJ. Hello, Dick. Hertz, where the winners rent. I've been putting up fence posts all day long. Hanson finally gets here, and all he's got is light beer. Ever taste light beer? This is Coors Light. The surprising taste of Coors Light comes from pure Rocky Mountain spring water and high country barley. Not bad. Good. Really good. And a way of brewing that squeezes a lot of the calories out but leaves all the taste in. Hanson, I am surprised. Coors Light, the surprise is how good it tastes. Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, it's highlights of World Cup skiing, plus highlights of the Nine Ball Pool Championship, and a report from Yugoslavia on the Monty Parloff and Marvin Campbell fight. Two minutes, six seconds remain in the first half. The Rams ball on their own 28-yard line. Game tied, 14 to 14. The Rams have made... 15 total yards in the first half. The Vikings, 251. Baragamo pitches it to Shorty. Complete to Tyler. And he is pulled down on his 33 yard line by Scott Studwell, the linebacker. Now the two minute warning goes out. And it will take time out along CBS way. Game time, 14 all. When you have questions like these about your money, get professional answers. I just got a great new job and a new apartment, but I need so many things. How do I establish credit? With the kids out of school, our savings are beginning to grow. But should we keep it all in a savings account? What else can we do? Keep your checking and savings at a full-service bank and get professional answers to your financial questions. America's full-service banks. We've got the answers. Time for milk. Any meal is a right time for milk. A glass of milk helps you go, go, go. When you're busy, as can be, milk's the answer, you'll agree. A great big glass of milk really makes the meal. A great big glass of milk really makes the meal. Kurt Gowdy and Hank Stram here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Game tied, 14 to 14. The Rams have the ball on their 33-yard line. Second down, five. For the last two minutes of the first half, Brian and Wendell Tyler, the running back, behind Vince Ferragamo. He throws, he completes it. And uh, Wendell Tyler coming out of the backfield again. They'll mark him on his 36-yard line. Matt Blair hit him there. He circled back to try and make a move to escape the defender, but couldn't do it. Now it's third down and two. From the split backfield, they have a de definite strong personality. They throw the ball most of the time, 90% of the time, from the split backfield. And that, and that tendency is held up so far in this game. Rams have called a time. Each team has two timeouts remaining. You were talking about all the Ram injuries. Typical uh, Hank of the Ram problems this year. It's really not funny to the Ram. Sid Justin returned a block punt 80 yards for a touchdown and pulled a hamstring muscle in the process. That's the way they've been going this year. Yes, and they've had 12 starters have some kind of a major injury during the course of the season. Six of, of those starters are on injured reserve. Look at the final, Kansas City 37, Seattle 21. Here's a list of players that have been hurt. John Capaletti, 
injured reserve Carl Erkin, injured reserve Jeff Severson, Willie Miller, Doug Smith, Pat Hayden, a lot of people, and they're still able to survive it all, and they're still very much involved in the race. This will be a third down two for the Rams from their own 36 yard line. Cardamo puts it up. Incomplete. No flags dropped. Tom Hannon defending against Terry Nelson, the tight end. You know, that time Terry Nelson really did a poor job. He should have come back or tried to come back toward the ball. He didn't do that that time, and for that reason, Hannon was able to make a good play on the on the thrown ball. Ken Clark in punt formation. There's Miller back. And now a timeout. I think the Rams may have called that. Oh, it's the Vikings. The Vikings called time so they wouldn't waddle around 30 seconds trying to get that off. Yes, and it's a good move on the part of the Minnesota Vikings, and uh, the Rams have to be careful in this last minute and 31 seconds the way this kid throws the ball and the way they move the ball down the field. They've always been very good during the two-minute offense. We'll see how they operate in this last minute and 31 seconds. And we've had some interesting developments happen already this afternoon in the NFL. Houston lost. Pittsburgh won. Cleveland beat Houston. So Pittsburgh is in first place of the Central Division of the American Conference with 11 wins, three losses. Houston second, 10 and four, and Cleveland's third, nine and five. Two of those teams got a shot in the wild card playoff game. Miller on the 25, dancing around to the 30, goes down to the 31 yard line. The Eagles won big today. And they've now won 10 and four, and they are going to be in first place, at least until next week, given oh, what Dallas and Washington have done. We have a minute 21 to go in the first half. The score tied 14 to 14. Vikings ball their own 31. Watch the way they function in this two minute offense. They'll do a good job, I'm sure. Grammar throws to Ricky Young. 35, Young gets away, 40, goes for the sideline. Very wisely steps out of bounds, stops the clock at the Viking 49-yard line. Driven out by Nolan Cromwell. If they continue, continue to, throw, to use a very soft defense, by that I mean not good at, do a good job of rushing the quarterback, Minnesota's going to do a good job of moving the ball down the field and possibly get three out of this, or at least get a shot at three, or even a touchdown. Ricky Young has had some brilliant moves today, both running and catching the yeah, ball. He's, he's really a fine back, and I remember very clearly when he played uh, for the San Diego Chargers. He's a, he's a snootful. On first down, Kramer again. Throws. Who is back away by number 64, Jackie Reynolds. Lieutenant for Stu Voigt, the tight end. Second down, 10. And a three man rush that time and did a good job on coverage. Three men rushing, eight falling back. And uh, number 64, Jack Reynolds, as you mentioned, really did a good job of knocking the ball down on the play. Tampa Bay was defeated today by the Chicago Bears. Tampa Bay now has won nine and lost five. The Bears have won eight and lost six. They're a game in back of Tampa Bay. A couple, three weeks ago, Tampa Bay was out in front by three games. Second down, 10 for the Vikings. Number 49. Hammer throw. The shots out of bounds. Just standing here by himself at the sideline. Give me the ball and calmly stepped out. 41 yard line of the Rams, and that stops the clock with a minute and three seconds remaining in the first half. The game tied 14 to 14. A first down for the Vikings. He had just a three man rush that time again with eight people dropping back. Rashad was just anchored over in the sideline watching for, for Kramer in case he got in trouble. He did get in trouble, threw it to the outside, and he made the catch for the first down. Rashad now has 66 catches for the year. That ties his career high in the season back in 78. And he's caught a pass in every game this year. There's his throw. It's complete to the 26-yard line to Rashad. 
who came into the league as Bobby Moore, a running back from Oregon University. With the Cardinals, wound up here with the Vikings. What a pickup he's been for Minnesota. Cromwell wrapped him up, clock moving, 43 seconds remaining. First down, Vikings, Ram 25. That's an incomplete pass to Ricky Young. That time, Jack Youngblood, number 85, got good pressure, even though it was a three, three step drop pass, a short one into the flat. He got in there quickly enough to make him throw the ball poorly. It was an errant pass and fell incomplete. Hank Young, Mr. Kramer, has passed for 202 yards in the first half. He has thrown the ball 27 times, completed 13. Two touchdown passes for him. You, you have to be impressed with this young quarterback. He's really done a great job. Second down, 10. There he is. Just knocked away. It was intended for Sammy White. Slapped by Rod Perry, the right cornerback. Rod Perry really did a good job of knocking the ball that time. Got a good jump as the ball was released. And got a hand in there and knocked it down. A nice play by Rod Perry, number 49. Third down and 10. New Orleans will be idle today. They play tomorrow night against the Oakland Raiders. The Rams win this game. They would be a half game in the lead of their division. If they lose, they'll be a half game out. So the New Orleans Saints are very interested in what happens here in the Coliseum yes, today. I'm sure those great fans in New Orleans are watching very intently on this game. Third down, 10. Kramer throws. The White, no good. Rod Perry again covering him man to man. Fourth and ten. Kramer will start for the sideline. And Dan Meyer comes in the field goal kicker number seven with 26 seconds remaining in the first half. They ran that two-minute offense very efficiently. And Rod Perry really made two great plays as a defensive back number 49. This will be a 43-yard attempt. Big scramble. Big scramble for the ball. Coming up with it is Jerry Wilkinson. He blocked it. Wilkinson blocked the field goal. That's two kicks they blocked. A punt and a field goal attempt. You know, it's a good move. Wilkinson is 6'9" and weighs 255, he's a rookie from Oregon State, but he put him right in the middle, got his hands up there in good shape, got, got a good leap, knocked the ball down, great play. Rams must have really studied those Viking game films last Sunday when they blocked four assorted kicks against Tampa Bay. First down, Rams ball, 18 seconds to go in the half. Ferragamo lobs the ball out, touched the turf, an incomplete pass to Cullen Bryant. Twelve seconds to go. They've got to be very careful that they don't make some dumb mistake here, Kurt, and give up the ball in the last 12 seconds to the Minnesota Vikings. Second down, 10. to the 36, Cullen Bryant. Five seconds to go. First half. Monday night on CBS, the White Shadow, MASH, WKRP in Cincinnati, and Lou Grant. Timeout called by the Rams. That'll be their last timeout of the half. Oh, they have one more. The Rams would win this game will be the first time they won three straight since last year. In 1978, they had a three-game winning streak. Also won their first seven in a row last year, if you'll recall. They've been spotty this year with all the injuries, winning no more than two straight, and once dropping three in a row. Seems like every club's had their little slumps. Uh, even Pittsburgh uh, lost a couple of one-sided games to Cincinnati and San Diego. How about the Eagles, Hank? They, they had a bad time there in the middle of the year. 
They were trounced by Cincinnati and, and how they bounced back. Yes, I really thought they overachieved last year, but uh, evidently uh, they've done a great job. And, and after the slump in the middle of the season, they've come on like gangbusters and really done a great job. This may be the last play of the half. It's the bomb right down the middle. It's picked off. Up for the ball is Paul Krause, who now holds a new National Football League record. He is the all-time interceptor. He has broken Emil Tunnell's record and is the all-time leading interceptor in the history of the National Football League. Look like Ferragamo and Brian are the fraternity brothers, the way he threw that ball. Number 80 for Paul Krause. Emlyn, Emlyn Tunnell had 79, so Krause is the all-time holder. With the score, 14 to 14 at halftime, we're now going to the special report on the Iranian situation. This is a CBS News special report, Iran, Day 29. From New York, here is George Herman. Good afternoon. The deposed Shah of Iran left his New York City hospital before dawn this morning for a flight to what is called a secure recuperation area at an Air Force base in Texas. A spokesman had a brief word about the Shah's condition and his sentiments as he ended his hospital stay. He was in a good mood and he was expressed his deep thanks to the hospital, the people of New York City, the New York City Police Department, the Emergency Services Unit that uh, spent a good deal of time upstairs with us. and. Uh, he thanked the United States government for the assistance, and uh, he especially expressed his sincere wishes for the uh, safe return of the hostages in Iran. A U.S. Air Force jet took the Shah to an air base just outside San Antonio on his way to an Air Force hospital. David Dick reports. The plane was an Air Force C-9A, normally used by State Department and Embassy VIPs. It was not an ambulance hmm. plane, but did have a special executive-style cabin. The plane landed at Kelly Air Force Base, which was sealed off to reporters and the general public. A caravan then appeared at adjacent Lackland Air Force Base near San Antonio. The Shah was believed to be in the second of two emergency medical vans. The caravan sped on to the base hospital. We were told officially that the Shah is here at the Wilford Hall Medical Center at Lackland Air Force Base. We think he is here, but we've not actually seen him. And the Air Force and hospital authorities refuse to answer any questions concerning the Shah, his case, his accommodations, his schedule, his possible departure time. David Dick, CBS News, Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio. This afternoon, the Air Force ordered all reporters off the base and said they could not come back as long as their business had to do with the Shah. A White House statement this morning said the Shah needed time to rest before making a longer trip. President Carter, returning from Camp David, was asked about final plans for the Shah. Are you going to offer the Shah permanent exile in this country, Mr. President? I can't answer that now. Do you know, do you know how long he'll stay? No, he's uh, to recuperate from his uh, illness. The students holding the U.S. Embassy in Tehran said today it would be, quote, a big mistake for the Shah to leave for any country other than Iran. Throughout Iran today, voting began on a referendum for a new Islamic constitution. The Ayatollah Khomeini cast his vote outside the great mosque in the holy city of Qom. Approval would make the 79-year-old Khomeini ruler of Iran for the rest of his life. Another attack on an American installation, the U.S. Embassy in Tripoli, Libya, burned by a mob. All personnel escaped safely despite the absence of a Libyan guards previously requested. Bernard Kalb reports from the State Department. The attack came four days after President Carter said Libya was one of the Muslim countries that had condemned Iran for holding the Americans hostage. Today, U.S. officials accuse Libya of failing to provide adequate security for the embassy. We have on several occasions, and most recently yesterday, asked for additional security precautions. There was no response. This morning, there was still one policeman outside our gate. National Security Advisor Brzezinski met with Secretary Vance at the State Department. Defense Secretary Brown attended the midday session. U.S. officials said Libya, Iran, and the Shah were all discussed. No other details made public. Bernard Kalb, CBS News, the State Department. The U.N. Security Council meets again tonight to complete the process begun last night of voicing its unanimous demand that Iran release all American hostages. George Herman, CBS News, New York. This has been a CBS News special report.
For the latest developments, watch the CBS Sunday Night News later tonight. Holidays were made for Michelob. Hi. Holidays were made for special friends. What better beer than Michelob for the holiday season? Special enough to make the right impression, friendly enough to show you care. No wonder Michelob has become a holiday tradition. Holidays were made for Michelob. Yeah. From the beginning, Continental Mark has been one of the highest forms of automotive expression. Now there's a new mark, Continental Mark VI, with a remarkable 41% improvement in EPA estimated miles per gallon over last year with a new automatic overdrive transmission with even more room inside than last year. And now there's yet another new mark, the Mark VI four-door. Continental Mark VI, still unmistakably Mark. In just three years, audio buffs have made Pioneer speakers America's best-selling. Pioneer is also the leader in cassette decks. Over the years, our amps and tuners have received critical acclaim as have our turntables. So, if you want a hi-fi system that's matched as carefully as it's engineered, get a component ensemble from Pioneer, because a component ensemble is only as good as the components ensembled. Pioneer, we bring it back alive. Next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Come with us to Val d'Isere, France, for highlights of the steep competition of World Cup skiing. Plus, highlights of the finals of the Professional Pool Players Nine Ball Championship. And a report from Yugoslavia on the WBC's first international cruiserweight boxing championship between number two ranked Mati Barlow of Yugoslavia and the number one ranked contender Marvin Camel. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Football, it's a game that begins in city lots, in country fields, in backyards and schoolyards. A game played by millions of youngsters all across America. And in a few moments, you'll see some of the best of these youngsters competing in the 1979 punt, pass, and kick area competition, sponsored by the Ford dealers and by the NFL. PP&K is open to boys and girls ages 8 to 13 and is a test of their ability to punt, pass, and kick a football for distance and accuracy. To get to the area competition, today's participants have had to win in local, zone, and district level competitions such as this. Area winners will advance to the division competitions in Houston and Tampa Bay, where they can earn a chance to compete in the national finals at Super Bowl XIV. Right now, they're ready to put their skills to the test. Skills that were developed through long hours of practice, patience, and coaching. Skills that begin with a game and PP and K. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In just a moment, 12 young people will compete in the area championships of the 19th annual punt, pass, and kick competition sponsored by the Ford Dealers of America and the National Football League. Earlier today, these contestants participated in the kicking and punting portions of the competition. Now, if the judges are ready, we will now begin our passing competition with the first eight-year-old, he'll be number 12, Ferdy Wojciechowski of Downey, California. We seem to have some technical difficulty. Here he is. That's out to the 38. Bertie Wojciechowski of Downey. This is Philip Nevin of Placentia, California. This is the eight-year-old division. And he's over the 40-yard line. Nice throw for Nevin. All right, now we're to the nine-year-olds. This is Steve Gates of North Ridge, California. Nice throw, Steve. And his competitor will be Chris Walls of Goleta, California.
Good toss. Next are 10 year old contestants. Larry Flowers Jr. of Van Nuys. Ooh. Had the arm on that one. Here is Brian Borgian of Hacienda Heights. This is the 10 year old division. The passing competition of the 19th annual punt pass and kick competition. A little bit short. Now the 11 year olds, Ed Hall of Thousand Oaks. And it's Lance Aldous of Hacienda Heights. Let's move to the 12 year olds. Mark Hill of Santa Monica. And his competitor will be Johnny Calvillo of Bakersville. There it is. Look at that one. Ooh, what a toss by Johnny Calvillo. Finally, our 13 year olds, John Boyles of Inglewood. That's it. That puts it up to Keith Williams of Bakersfield. And that completes the passing competition. The officials will tabulate the scores. The winners will be announced at the end of the third quarter. Stay tuned now as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station. Tonight at 8, 7 Central. My high school class is naming me man of the year. And the old flames return to Archie Bunker's place. How's oh, it? This is CBS. There's our halftime score. Los Angeles and Minnesota, 14 to 14. And we'll be back here from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum right after these messages. kids everywhere can enjoy the thrill of auto racing with these new radio controlled cars from Radio Shack. On the track, obstacle course, or off the road, you control all the action with the radio transmitter. Detailed replicas of actual vehicles. There's even a tank. Ten different models priced from $11.95 to $49.95. Excitement for kids and grown-ups too. The gift-priced radio controlled toys only at Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. I'd like to talk to you about the Sony Betamax and an incredible feature called Betascan. I'm Tom Williams, Sr., and if you know tennis, you know my son. Here's a cassette of his last championship match. Betascan lets me go fast forward and reverse so I can skip the boring stuff like this long rally and stop when I come to the real exciting parts like Tom Jr. here dashing onto the court to pick up the ball. Isn't Betamax terrific? It lets you see what you've been missing and miss what you don't want to see. It's from Sony, the one and only. Little kids like these make you realize we're all family. But when it comes down to solving problems, there's one thing you gotta realize. We're all in this together. I'm Ahmad Rashad of the Minnesota Vikings, and this is the Haley Q. Brown Community Center. There are hundreds of United Way agencies like this all across the country. There's a place like it in my hometown, Tacoma, Washington. I know because they help my family. My mom and dad go there just like these senior citizens, to be with friends. I've been there. And I know what places like this do for your spirit. United Way is people, not just giving dollars to fight cancer and other diseases, though God knows that's important, but giving of themselves. That's what makes us a family. 
and the community. The United Way works here in the Twin Cities, and it works in your town, too. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement furnished to the public service by the National Football League. And Hank Stram, it looks like the Rams are going to have a new quarterback in the second half. Yes, I think Lee's going to definitely be in the, in the game in the second half, and justifiably so. I'm really surprised that he didn't get in the game earlier in the first half. What overwhelming statistics for the Vikings. They had 16 first downs to three for the Rams. Total net yards, listen to this or look at it. 285 yards for the Vikings, 44 yards for the Rams. Two turnovers on each team. Time of possession, nearly double for the Vikings. And they ran off 49 plays to 26 for the Rams. And yet they're tied at 14 all. Well, I think that's a great illustration of the fact that there's three things that can happen during a football game. They're offensive, defense, and especially teams. And basically, if you win two out of the three, you've got a chance to win. Actually, what's happened here in this game so far, really, the Rams have done a good job defensively overall. They've done a great job with their specialty teams. The Vikings are much better offensively, but in the final analysis, the Rams are better in two, and th two out of the three categories. Let's repeat again. At the end of the half, we didn't have time. We had to go away for the news uh, bulletin. Paul Kraus intercepted a pass, his 80th career interception. A new National Football League record breaking Emlyn Fennell's mark. Krause in his 16th year at the University of Iowa. He played with Washington and Minnesota eight times in all pro. And he is a new record holder today in the National Football League. All right, the Vikings are going to kick it off. Rick Danmeyer. Leading rusher in the game. Ricky Young with 54 yards. For the Rams, Cullen Bryant, 28 yards. Here's the boot. Taken on the 12-yard line by Eddie Hill. He's up to the 20, 25. Spun around and out of bounds. He'll go out on his 27-yard line. It will be first down. And we do have a new quarterback, Bob Lee who came in to nail down a victory against the San Francisco 49ers last Sunday. Is now the quarterback. Ferragamo was four out of ten. Did not move them in the first half. Lee going against his old teammates, the Minnesota Vikings. We understand he left there in a not happy move. A handoff on the first play. Maybe goes for a yard. Wendell Tyler hit by James White, the right tackle. For the most part, the Vikings have been in a four-man front. Now and then they've gone to a three-man front. And they're opening up with Mullaney at left end, Roller at left tackle, White at right tackle. We'll check the right end. It's Marshall, Blair, Seaman, McNeil, the linebackers, Turner and Bryan on the corners, Knopf and Hannon, the safety man. This has been a passing formation for the Minnesota or for the Los Angeles Rams to see if they throw the ball. They do. Second and nine. Lee's pitch over the head of Wendell Tyler coming out of the backfield. Third and nine coming up for the Rams. Coming on here is Paul Krause, the all-time record holder for the National Football League. His 80th career reception today. They threw it right in his arms as the gun went off for the half. He didn't even have to scramble for that one, Hank. No, he didn't, but he really made a... He's been a terrific player for a great many years for the Minnesota Vikings. Longevity is one of the keys to real stardom, and he's had it. Third down, nine. Blitz. And complete. Coming up was Kraus to make the hit on Tyler just as he was about to get the ball. Well, Kraus does it again. He goes off. He's done his job. Fourth down, the punt formation by Ken Clark. And it's Kevin Miller back to receive the punt. I'd be very concerned if I were the Los Angeles Rams coaching staff, Kurt, at this stage of the game, the way they're playing offensively. Score tied 14 to 14. Kurt Gowdy and Hank Stram from the Coliseum. 80 degrees right now in Los Angeles.
kicks away a low one. Miller on his 33 to the 35 coming up to the 40 and not quite the 40. They'll take him out of bounds on his 39 yard line. The Vikings ball first down chasing him out with Eddie Brown. There's our score early in the third period. Minnesota 14 Los Angeles 14. Introducing the 1980 Mercury Marquee. Feel the Marquee ride. The Mercury Marquee is not only spacious and comfortable, it has 70% better gas mileage ratings than 1975. Feel the Marquee ride. The 1980 Mercury Marquee. Come feel how well it's designed. Feel the Marquee ride. <laughs> Holiday greetings from Budweiser. The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours a happy and safe holiday season. Next Saturday and Sunday at 3.30 Eastern, it's the exciting Mixed Team Golf Championship with top female and male pros competing.